Okay. Cool. Now it's recording. Excellent. Excellent. So, Gustav, I'm going to start with you because you're already unmuted and you're kind enough to show, you, show, you, show us your face and we'll make sure we start on time, we finish on time, we have a good time. Mate, what would you like to know tonight? Um, I think uh, a bit of everything, yeah, really. Uh, I mean, the best ways to hodl, for instance, uh, but also uh, maybe a bit on the trading side, possibly. Uh, uh, for uh, for those who wants to go that way, you know. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, possible services that can be used for getting in and getting out. On trades, you mean? On trades, yeah. Yep. Uh, so, okay. so that's all I've got there, yep. really. So. Okay. Cool. So you've already got some coins yourself, or are you looking to find the best ones to hold? Um, I have some coins myself. Okay, cool. Yeah. Excellent. All righty. So we'll get to that in a sec. Now check in with young Linda, who's been waiting patiently for an hour. If you could give us a wave. No, I was actually just checking that it was all working for me. Yep, <laughs> yep. That came. Oh, okay. Okay. All, right, all good. So what would you like to learn tonight, Linda? So I just wanted to get an update of where the market is from yourself. Um, also just to learn obviously a bit more about what's happening and pick up any tips or hints that you have um, in my whole learning journey. So yeah, just here to learn really. Okay. Okay. So Linda, Gustav has, has talked about holding, which is just like buying a coin and holding it for the next, you know, five, 10, 20 years. Um, he's also mm -hmm. talked about trading where we normally, you know, you might buy something at nine o'clock in the morning and you might sell it the next day. Um, yep. So of those two, which do you think you're leaning more towards? Um, I think both have their place, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's what it's about in the market at the moment is, is being an astute investor um, you know, buying, holding, knowing when to sell, buy in the morning, sell at night. You know, I know I really, I don't have time to watch the market yeah. um, because I'm working. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know if, if there's any best websites that you can just have going in the background, um, best, you know, sites to purchase, buy and sell on, you know, just simple things. I like simple products and, and websites that are easy to use. Sure. So both of those are great. Yeah. Okay. Now, Linda, <clears throat> did you come to us through the Quillionaire group or through Boston Coin? Um, both. Both. Okay. Um, if you jump onto the Quillionaire YouTube channel, uh, this is where we interviewed a lot of the CEOs of coins and things a couple of years ago. Um, I recently did a 10 minute video on there of my actual trades and it was live in my account it shows my email address and my balance so if you want to stalk me and rob me you can um, but it's just showing a very very simple way of trading um, i wouldn't say that i'm the best trader in the world um, i wouldn't say that greg norman is a better golf player than tiger woods because they've all got their own individual style and yeah. what i like to do is i learn from five or six different people and then I can sort of choose the one that, that fits me best. So that's, you know, you, you're welcome to have a look at what I've done. And if we get a bit more time towards the end of the call, I'll, I'll actually open it up and show you a couple of trades I'm in right now as of you know, today um, and show you that live so you can have a look at that. But mm -hmm. it, can, it can be very, very simple. Like 20 years ago, I used to trade the stock market and I was sitting in front of my computer for 15, 18 hours a day. And that's probably what contributed to my heart attack at 33. So mm. I don't do that now. I literally, I get up in the morning, I open the computer, I check the markets, uh, it takes about five minutes. And if there's an opportunity, I set a trade and I set my entries and exits. Like Gustav, Gustav was saying before, you know, when do you get in, when do you get out? I set those up yeah. ahead of time and then I walk away. And maybe five minutes before I go to bed, I'll check it again. 
and if it needs to be moved, then I'll move things. If it doesn't need to be moved, I'll let it go and I'll check it again the next day. So it's literally you know, less than 15 minutes a day, literally as you're having breakfast and, and just before you go to bed. Um, and it's very, very simple. Very, very simple. It's sort okay. of plug and play sort that of stuff. That sounds really so, good. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's kind of style. Okay, cool. So let's Thank move you. on to young David. Young David, thank you for joining us. Good to Hello, see your Jeremy. smiley face. Uh, what yes, would you most Jeremy. like to learn about tonight? Um, knowing what I know, which is pretty limited, um, not that I've been a lot on, on um, Boston Coin or, or Krillian Air, um, entry, entry strategies, ways to protect yourself, um, exit strategies, um, just the way in terms of the different groups of Boston coins, or sorry, the different Bitcoins. And, and I suppose um, knowing that they fluctuate during the year, depending on season to season, which is one of the things that I picked up, um, you know, a limiting factor, I suppose, but um, a determinant on, you know, as the market rolls on, um, is there specific sectors of coins that are more appropriate um, to actually do your analysis on? And I suppose they're the sorts of things that come to mind at present. Yeah. I mean, as you know, David, it's, it's a big market and it can be, can be very confusing. Um, I mean, I've, I've got 30 years of experience in the stock market and people say, you know, what's the best stock to own? And it might be, this one or that one or something else, depending on what you want to do. Now, some mm. people say the best stock is the one that makes them the most money, but if it's going to be high risk and, you know, similar to how Bitcoin went up to 20,000 then dropped down to 6,000 and, you know, people yep. were freaking out, but if they held on, then that came back up to 40,000. But in the middle time, it was very, very scary. So if you want to make the most money and you're not afraid of the ups and downs, then that would have been the best one to have. But then there's something else that might have just ticked along quite nicely and made 10% per year. So maybe that's the better coin for someone to have, just making money quietly and steadily. Um, but then, then you come into personal preferences, like you know, some, some of my clients would never invest into mining because they didn't like mining. They didn't feel comfortable with how the mining companies you know, wrecked the environment. They didn't invest into tobacco, cigarette companies, alcohol companies, um, you know, brothels, legalised prostitution, um, legalised marijuana, those sort of things, because ethically they mm. didn't feel comfortable with those. So, you know, there's, there's crypto coins which actually invest into marijuana dispensaries and, and things like that. But if ethically you're not comfortable with it, then it's not a coin. Even if it makes you a lot of money, it's not going to be a good coin for you. Yep. So I'd say it comes down to, to personal preference first, find out what you're comfortable with, and then you can distill, you know, 3,000 different coins. There might be, say, 100 that you're comfortable with, and then you do a little bit of research on some of them and go, oh, look, I, I don't trust that one, I don't like that one, that one's really volatile, and you might sort of distill it down to 40 or 50 that you like. And obviously, I'm going to be biased and say that Boston coin is the greatest coin in the world. Um, because it's performed very well. It's got less volatility than Bitcoin because it's got, you know, 20 or 30 different coins in there. So when one's going down, the other ones are going up. But obviously take my advice with it with a grain of salt as well and, and do your own research. But the main thing is that you feel comfortable because you, you don't want to be bragging to your friends at church how you made 100,000% by investing into I don't know, something they're ethically opposed to, you know what I mean? So start, start with your personal comfort and then come back to what's actually going to make you money in the way you want to make it, not you know, whether you like the ups and downs or whether you like the slow and steady. So, and that, that's probably a point too for, for Gusta, for yourself and for Linda, um, is when you're holding onto the coins and saying, okay, I want to buy Bitcoin because I think Bitcoin is going to be the number one coin forever because it's been the number one coin for the last 10 years um, while you're holding on to it you can also invest that like a term deposit and you can earn interest on it so even when bitcoin went down from twenty thousand dollars down to six thousand dollars you're still actually earning interest on that coin 
which is something like traditionally we haven't been able to do with other commodities. So you can buy gold and gold just ticks along and doesn't do much except for when the economy goes pear-shaped. Um, when all the stock market's going down, gold will go up, but you're not earning any interest on your gold. Whereas Bitcoin and Ethereum and you know, the top, top 20 sort of coins, you can earn interest on those as well. And that can be a good way of making money while you're holding. So um, for, for Gustav and, and Linda, I probably in, in the interest of saving a little bit of time, um, I'd suggest you go and have a look at say the Krillionaire um, YouTube channel um, where we've done a whole, a whole video, which is a, almost an hour long on how to choose the best coins. Um, and looking at which ones are going to be around for the longer term, because obviously, you know, 2017, 2018, when the market was going gangbusters, it did attract a lot of scammers into the market. And by sort of like early 2018, 92% of the coins in the market were scams. 92%. Right? <laughs> That's wow. a lot. 90% nine, nine, chance of losing your money. Um, but because, because we used a particular method, um, and it's only, it's only a four-step process, which we call the coin process, um, because we used that method, even when the markets went down, we didn't actually go to zero. So we bought something like 47 coins during that year, and not one of them was a scam coin. Mm. So even though, obviously, you know, Bitcoin went down from 20,000 down to 6,000, we didn't lose our money entirely to zero. We just waited. And of course, when things came good, they bounced back. So that was okay. Um, guys, if you want to drop your email into the chat box, I know Muliani is here taking notes and helping us out. Um, so Muli, you might be able to find, uh, there's actually a video where we describe the coin process. So if you want to watch the video, um, and there's also an article on krillionaire.com called how to choose your altcoin safely. So, you know, it's like five or 10 minutes to read the, read the um, article or, you know, as I say, like 30, 40 minutes to watch the video, whichever way you feel comfortable with watching and learning or reading and learning. And Muliani can send you the links so you can actually have a look at that. And it'll save you a lot of time. It'll save you a lot of grief because there was people who made over a thousand percent in some of those coins um, and then within a few months they've lost all their money so all righty so we wanted to have a look at some trading um, so Molly if you could also send the guys uh, the links for that um, Krillionaire one where I do the, do the 10 minute trading but I'll just open up my account now uh, while you guys here and I'll see if I can share my screen. And oh, Molly's putting the um, the link in the in the chat box there, so you can actually click on it and go straight there. Bookmark it for for later on. Okay, so I'm sharing my screen somehow. All right. yeah. Uh, yeah. Jeremy. Yes. Ah, I've put the Krillianer YouTube website link on the chat box and maybe yeah. for others can access on from the chat box. Yeah, yeah. So they can copy and paste that from the chat box or otherwise you can email it to them as well, because we obviously don't want to open up a YouTube while we've got the video running. Um, okay, they can the email on the chat box and I will record it. Yeah. Yep, yep. Beautiful. Thank you for that. All right. So this is just one, one trading platform. There are hundreds and hundreds of these. I think there's about 200 or 300. Um, this is just one that I like because it's very simple. It's called BitMEX. If you want a link for that, I can, I can send you a link for that as well. I think it's probably also on the, um, on the Krillionaire page. Because we do do, Nuliani's been writing these wonderful things. Every, every week she writes a new article um, about a new coin, a new exchange, um, a crypto credit card. So you can actually put your Bitcoin onto a Visa card and you can go and spend that money anywhere that takes Visa. 
So that's really, really handy as well. You don't have to cash in your Bitcoin back into your bank account and tell the tax man about it if you don't want to. Um, you can literally go and spend it. And the crypto credit card has rewards as well. I get 3% cash back. So when I go and buy, say, $500 worth of work on the car or $500 worth of groceries, it gives me $15, $15 in cash back, which is quite handy. Mm. And over time, like over the last few months, I've actually received almost $1,000 back um, just by using that crypto credit card. It's got no fees, no charges. There's no application fee for it. And, um, yeah, it just gives you cash back that you can use for, for other purchases. So there's a lot of good articles on there. If you want to go on the curlinair.com and thank Miliani for that. But this is, this is BitMEX. Um, it's a very simple, uh, I'm just trying to minimize that a picture of all of us there. Um, so you see across the top here, it's got Bitcoin, Cardano, Bitcoin Cash, Binance Coin, Polkadot, EOS, Ethereum, Chainlink, Litecoin, Tron, Ripple, Tezos, and Yearn. Okay, so there's like 12 or 13 coins on there. It's obviously not all the coins that are available because there's literally thousands of coins. Um, but this one is just one of the easiest to use. And you, know, you might not have heard of Cardano or, or Tron or whatever, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Um, these are some of the biggest coins. And the reason why they have these on the platform is because it's the biggest volume. You know, you, you might buy a little coin for one cent and it goes up to a dollar and you go, yay, I'm rich. Uh, but if you can't sell that coin to anybody, then it's going to be a big problem. Obviously, with Bitcoin and Ethereum, the market size of those is, is in the trillions of dollars. Uh, so there's always going to be buyers. So you want to look at the, the bigger ones to be trading because you want to get out of the trades. Um, so even, even of these like 12 or 13 coins, there's one or two of these coins that I don't trade at all. And that's because I've traded them several times before. And it is difficult to get out of the trade. So I'm just highlighting on Tron here. Um, and I'll have to expand that up so we can see where it's gone. Yeah, not much price action. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's literally not much trading at all going on with that one. Um, but you can buy these little things for, for a fraction of a cent. Um, you know, 0.000008 cents, um, and then if it goes up to 10 cents, happy days. But it's very difficult to sell them. That's the problem. Um, and so you might have made money, but it's hard to get out of the trade. And for that reason, like I've traded this one five or six times, um, and each time I've found it hard to get out of. So I've, I've stopped trading that one. Uh, so let's have a look at Bitcoin. Everybody knows what Bitcoin is. And this is all live. So you can see little flashing lights going on over the right hand side of the screen. And that's people literally buying and selling. And there's people putting in bids for, I want 10,000 Bitcoins and I want 32 Bitcoins and I want 15,000 Bitcoins and things like that. So it's flashing and the prices are going crazy. And down the bottom left, you can see the price is, is fluctuating and there's going up and down. So um, basically you've just got a whole bunch of green and red candles I mean the price is going up price is going down and when you're trading that's what you want you want the volatility you want the price moving up and down uh, because if it's always moving in the one direction you're not actually going to be able to make so much profits in there um, so say for example you know you might have bought here which is thirty thousand eight hundred, and you held onto it and then you know days later, the price is 31,000. So you've made about 200 bucks if you're holding an entire Bitcoin through that period. But if you'd got in here and the price went up to there, so you, know, you bought in at what, 30,000 and the price went up to 33, then you could jump out, you've made 10% in a space of you know, 16 hours. Um, and then when the price moves back down the other way, you can either let it go or you can trade it down. And when it goes down by 10%, you can actually make money going the other way. So what's happened here, if you want to have a look at my, my live trade, there's a little dotted tiny green line there. I'm hoping you can see that. 
that's the point where I got in, right? That's showing you where I bought. So I was watching the market and I was drawing these squiggles and watching the market. The market had gone up and had gone down and gone up and gone down. And I thought it's going to go down a little bit more, but I didn't think it was going to go much further down. So I sort of thought, okay, that's going to be the bottom round about here. Um, it was heading down and it sort of started to bottom out at like 31,000. And that's where it sort of stopped in those two candles. And I thought if it gets down to whatever this price is, 30,500. So the market was at 31,000. And I, I put in a bid for 30,500. I thought if it gets down to there, then I'll buy it. And I'm buying it $500 cheaper than everybody else. So I put in the bid there. As you can see, within a few hours, it cropped down to there and then bounced back up immediately. So I only just filled my order and I bought 1,000 Bitcoin, all right? Of course, I don't have the money to buy 1,000 Bitcoin, uh, which is why we look at over, over here where you can actually buy on leverage. So it's like when you buy a house, no one has a million dollars to drop down in cash, but you put down your deposit, you know, your 10% deposit, and then you borrow the rest. So that's what I've done here. I wouldn't recommend that everybody does that to start off with because obviously that's higher risk when you're borrowing money. Um, but that's something I worked up to after learning and playing with it for months and months. At first I was just putting a dollar here and a dollar there. So anyway, bought in thousand contracts right there at 30,500 and immediately the market started to bounce up and then it went back down, then it went up, then it come back down and at the moment it's still up. So I've let this trade play but when I, when I first put the trade in at 30,500, I had no guarantee that it wasn't going to keep going down to 30,000. So I put in this stop market. So I said, okay, I'm buying at 30,500. If the market continues to go down to 29,000, I'm going to jump out and that'll automatically sell for me. I don't need to be there watching it. And it just jumps out and goes, okay, you know, the 10% the that I put up, if the market moves down 10%, I've lost my money, okay? I've lost the money that I put up. I can't lose any more. So even though I've borrowed, you know, umpteen thousand dollars, I can't lose any more than what I've put on the table. So I might've put, you know, say 20 or $30 on the table. Um, that's the maximum I would lose if the market went down, okay? Because I put that stop loss there. Now, as it happens, the market has gone up and down and up and down. So I can sort of drag this along here and say, okay, where are we right now? Market is actually where this red line is. So it's 31131. That's what the market is at the moment, okay? So it's not far above where I, I got in, okay? What, almost $1,000, not quite $1,000 above where I bought in, okay? Uh, but this, this trade is still running. Like it's gone up, it's gone down, it's gone up. I could have jumped out there if I was watching the market at the time. But I've actually put my target a lot higher. Um, so I'm waiting for when the market gets up to 36,000, that's when I'm going to jump out. And I chose that price based on my analysis. So, you know, particularly for you, Linda, um, I, I basically set this, said, okay, if the market gets down to there, I'm going to buy it. So I put in my bid. I put in my stop loss to protect myself from losing money and I put in my target. So if it gets to there, that's when I'm going to walk away. I'm not waiting for it to be 100,000 or even 50,000. I'm just saying when I've made 12%, then I'm jumping out of the market automatically. Okay. I only have to wait for it to go up 12% because I'm actually getting 10 times my money in here because I've got it on leverage. I can move that back. So right now it's showing that I've made 24% and that figure will change as the market changes. Um, but if I was playing on one times leverage, um, it won't let me change it back down. But if I was changing on 100 times leverage, I would have made 247% on what I actually put into the market. All right? So you can borrow a lot more money than what you put in. Um, but obviously you've got to have your analysis right. And you've got to be able to set your, um, set your emergency stop so you can get out without losing too much money. So how are we doing with that, guys? Is that too high level, too complex? No, that's pretty good, I think. That's pretty good. Yeah. It's as, interesting. As I say, obviously, 
wouldn't, yep. we wouldn't be doing the whole borrowing money or I wouldn't be doing the whole borrowing money bit. So that's kind of a bit above my level. Yep. Um, it'd be more like me putting $50 in there and seeing if I could make 60. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Or make um, 10, you know, walk out with 60. <laughs> and, and as I say, oh, Liz, yeah. I, I traded the markets, the stock markets 20 years ago, but I, I didn't trade since 2005. After I had my heart attack, I didn't trade the markets at all. And I've only gotten into trading crypto markets, um, you know, it's like six or eight months ago. And I've been learning very slowly, like I'm in kindergarten all over again. Um, and yeah. because on, on Bitcoin, um, on, sorry, on BitMEX, this, this platform I'm on right now, um, I can actually set the trades up. When I set the trades up automatically, um, I don't pay any brokerage. So I was literally putting $2 in. And instead of paying the $20 every time you buy and $20 every time you sell, like you do in the stock market, I, I didn't mm. pay anything at all. So I'd put $2 in, didn't pay for, for the fee. And then when it went up to you know $3, I could jump out and I didn't pay anything on there. And I did that for weeks, weeks and weeks and weeks. I just put in $2, $2, $3 and did that for, for maybe, maybe two months. Just played with little tiny amounts oh. while I was practicing. And some days I go, woohoo, I made $4 today. And other days I go, oh my God, I just lost $4.50. Um, but it was all about learning and practicing. Like the first time you get into the car, you don't go, I'm going to see how fast this, this car can go. Like a learner is not going to drive at 160 k's an hour. You get in there and you start slow and you feel the corners and you do some reverse parks and you do all the boring stuff. And after you feel really, really comfortable, that's when you can start to do 70 in the car. You know? mm -hmm. So again, there's, there's a video on this which goes for about 10 minutes explaining that. Um, I'm, I'm actually part of a larger group which is called MBA. It's My Bitcoin Academy. And there's literally thousands of traders in this group um, mostly Australians, but a fair few from overseas as well, who are learning from each other and helping each other. So they, they do Zoom calls five nights a week and there's a different trainer every time. So you can learn from a different person. This is why I was talking about the golf thing before, because you're learning from a different person. You can pick up on different styles. And I use a quite conservative style. Um, mine's not super aggressive. I'm not watching the computer all day, every day. Um, I literally jump in five minutes in the morning, five minutes in the evening. And I play on 10 times leverage. And as you can see down here, um, I've only got two trades on at the moment. Right? So I'm I've, I've trading Bitcoin and I'm trading Ethereum. There are other people who will have nine or 10 trades on at once. Um, and they might be on 100 times leverage. And they might be using another platform which has got up to 300 coins on it. Whereas I'm using a platform which is pretty simple and it's got maybe 10 coins on it that I actually use. And it's very easy to use. So let's say, for example, if I want to move that, that stop loss down, I can just click that and drag that. You know, if I want to move my profit up or down, I can just click those and drag those and say, okay, I've decided now I want to get it here at 7% rather than 12%. And it's very, very simple, very easy to use. That's why I like it because it's simple enough for me that I can't get into too much trouble. Whereas if I was trading 300 coins at once, it's, it's like flying a rocket ship as opposed to, you know, driving a car. Yeah. So, um, so Muliani will send those, those links to you guys. Um, I did want to keep this one short and sweet. Uh, we do have another course scheduled for same time next Tuesday. I want to do them on Tuesday nights, but obviously Australia Day throws out this week. Um, so if you can make that call, great. Um, if you've got any other questions, feel free to, to drop me an email or drop Muliani an email. And um, hopefully we'll see you next week. Maybe you know, bring a couple of friends along, make a date of it, bring some popcorn. And um, we'll just do, again, 30, 40 minutes and then let everybody go about their lives. Sound good? That's great. Thanks, Jeremy. Cool. All right. Thank you, guys. Have Thanks. a great night. Shoot me an email if you've got any questions and we'll chat to you next week. Thanks Definitely. for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.